All right. So quick video lesson. I'm going to go quickly on this because most of it is review. All right. So the Nearpod is here. It's um, attached. And so you'll go through it as quickly as you can, making sure you complete all the activities. These are all review quizzes, things that I've really already gone over. And if you've done the rest of these activities, it should go fairly quickly. Um, let me know if you like the time to climb, what you think, because I'm looking for feedback. But basically, the, mo the meat of the new part of this lesson is that we want to be able to tell the difference between literary elements and techniques, right? So elements are those things that have to be there, that you can't have a story without them, right? Narrative writing, again, it just means writing that tells a story. Um, and it could be a true story or a non-true story. And it could be written in many different structures, right? You can have narrative poetry. You can have narrative, you know, you have a story rap even, right? Songs that tell a story. Um, and then the literary techniques are the fun things that people do with language that make it more interesting. All right. So you'll do some activities just to know if you can tell the difference between elements and techniques, first in basketball and then in cooking, and then finally in literature, which is our subject. Um, and then you will look at this video on what to do when we see repetition, because one of the techniques that's going to come up in the, the readings we're doing today is repetition, where something is told over and over again. And in fact, we've seen this one before, this literary technique before. We saw it in Steph Guida's speech. I asked you guys um, in this listening analysis activity to watch this speech. It's a seven-minute speech. And then talk about what you noticed that how she used language. And most people didn't write anything. They didn't notice that she did this stuff. But she did it all very much purposefully. It's called parallel structure um, and repetition. So she repeats the theme right here. I put it in yellow. It takes a village. It takes a village to raise a child. We are that village. That's also drawing on schema she expects you to have. She expects you to know that phrase, that it takes a village to raise a child. It's a famous African proverb. It's been used all over the place, that she expects you to have the schema for that and for that to build her, um, her theme, right, her main idea. She also uses parallel structure when she says, for every wake-up call from an over-enthusiastic -enthusiast counselor at 9 a.m., for every community meeting that made you wish you were still in bed, for every motherly hug squeezed out of you by Sid, it's going to be a long time before I can hug you again. I miss you. For every benchmark that didn't go as smooth as you would think it did. For every late B61 in the middle of the winter made you wait a half an hour and you still showed up. For every time you tried to cut class and Roberto has chased you down the block. Right? So those for every time, she's using that parallel structure to give you a bunch of examples. And she's drawing on examples that she thinks will play to the schema of the audience because this is stuff that you wouldn't know if you're not a South Brooklyn student. You wouldn't know that I give really good hugs. You wouldn't know that Roberto's known to chase you down the block. You wouldn't know that the B61 is the bus to take in here. And this word benchmark, you guys don't know now, but that's an old word that we used to use. It was part of South Brooklyn language for a long time. Um, it meant assessment or marking period or both. So um, this is, we're seeing repetition in parallel structure right here in this speech. And you're going to look for it again in the House on Mango Street piece. All right, we're also going to watch just a bit because we're asking ourselves, how are these pieces, especially those that are fiction, a little bit autobiographical? And so this video, Sandra Cisneros kind of explains about that, um, how the book, The House on Mango Street, um, is a little bit autobiographical and where that comes from. And this piece, Four Skinny Trees, is from that, right? And so notice, she keeps repeating four skinny trees, four skinny trees. They send down ferocious roots. They grow and they grow down. Four who grew despite the concrete. Four who reach and do not forget to reach. Four whose only reason is to be and be. All right. So these four skinny trees are definitely um, working that. And you will write down, what do you think that means? And then you'll compare it to the rows that grew from concrete. And then you'll do that in a more extensive way down here in this assignment. Because hopefully you're just going to see that four skinny trees are very similar to those rows that grew from concrete. And they share kind of a theme about resilience. Um, when you have completed that Nearpod lesson, you're going to be looking for which elements are important in the work and how do you know?